Here is a case of working with order statistics from first principles. That is just using the transformation technique. We have no theory to lean on here. We will develop that a little bit later. But in this case, we're going to assume that we have two observations, and those two observations will be x1 and x2. We're also going to assume a uniform population, and more specifically, we'll let x1 and x2 be independent uniform 0, 1 random variables and we want to find the joint probability density function of x1 which is the minimum of x1 and x2 that's the first order statistic and x2 which is the maximum of x1 and x2 so in some ways this is one of the easiest cases we can start with so to begin x1 that random variable will be uniformly distributed between 0 and 1 and because of that we know that its marginal probability density function will be just 1 for x1 values between 0 and 1. Next x2 will also be uniformly distributed between 0 and 1 independent of x1 and because of that, its probability density function, fx2, will also be 1, and that will be for x2 values between 0 and 1. Now, we're going to use the transformation technique, so just like before, the steps will be numbered. Step 1 is always find the distribution, I'm sorry, find the support of the random variables x1 and x2. Well, in this case, x1 and x2 jointly will be defined on the unit square so this will be 0 is less than x1 is less than 1 and 0 is less than x2 is less than 1. Step 2 will be to find the joint distribution of x1 and x2 and that is done in the following fashion x1, x2, and the joint distribution, because we have assumed that the random variables are independent, will be the product of the two marginals. 1 times 1 is 1, so that will be a joint distribution of 1 defined on the unit square. 0 is less than x1 is less than 1, 0 is less than x2 is less than 1. That's step 2. Step three, we now take a look at our transformation. And the transformation is x1 is equal to the minimum of x1 and x2. And x2 is equal to the maximum of x1 and x2. Now a couple things in terms of notation here. First of all, you're used to seeing y1 and y2 right here. We could have called these, and some textbook authors do, called this y1 and this one y2. But since this notation with the um, parentheses around the subscript is so common, I've stuck with that. But keep in mind that this could be like y1 and y2. Also keep in mind that this first transformation here, this minimum, you can think of as a transformation. This is the transformation G1 of X1 and X2. And this transformation right here is G2 of X1 and X2. Again, the transformations are actually choosing the minimum and choosing the maximum. The next question is to see whether or not this is a one-to-one -one transformation. And the way that you do that is you draw in the x1, x2 plane the support script A. And script A, you can see from up here, is that unit square. So there it is. That unit square right there is script A. So the question is, where does that map to? So if we look at our transformed values, they will be x1 and x2. 
we know that because x1 is between 0 and 1 and x2 is between 0 and 1, then both the minimum and the maximum must also be between 0 and 1. So we know at least we're inside of the unit square, but we have the further restriction that the order statistic x1 and the order statistic x2, x1 has to be smaller than x2. So when you add that constraint in, you wind up with a script B that falls right here. Now the next question is, is this a one-to-one -one transformation? And I'm going to pick a specific point here, and that specific point looks to be about maybe 0 0.7, 0 0.9. Where does 0 0.7, 0 0.9 map to? Well, 0 0.7 maps to 0 0.7 for the first order statistic, and 0 0.7, 0 0.9 maps to 0 0.9 for the second order statistic. So this maps to the same point over here. This point right here maps to this point right here. Well, how about this point right over here? This is the point 0 0.9, 0 0.7. Well, 0 0.9, 0 0.7 maps to a first order statistic of 0 0.7 and a second order statistic of 0.9 so this point right here maps to that point right there so now we have two different points mapping to the same point so this is not a one-to-one -one transformation but if you look at it and do a, a number of test points you will find that this minimum and maximum is like folding this lower region down here over onto the upper triangle so this is a 2 to 1 transformation. Now in the textbook, before we got to order statistics, there were some details on how to handle a 2 to 1 transformation. And basically we treat this upper portion here as script A1 and this lower portion at the bottom as script A2. And we look at the two transformations separately. That is script A1 going to script B and script A2 going to B. And we get a separate uh, inverse and Jacobian for each one. And that's what we'll do on the next slide. So step four in the process is to find the uh, two inverse transformations. The first one is from script A1 to script B. Now you know that the transformation itself in this case is x1 equals the minimum of x1, x2, and x2 is equal to the maximum of x1 and x2. But on script A1, what happened back there? Well, on script A1, we simply went from this point to itself. So since we are mapping directly from one point to itself, the inverse will be x1 is equal to the first order statistic, and x2 is the second order statistic. In this case, the Jacobian, and I'm going to call this Jacobian 1 because there's going to be another Jacobian later, dx1, dx1 is 1, dx1, dx2 is 0, dx2, dx1 is 0, and dx2, dx2 is 1. This Jacobian turns out to be 1 for the transformation from script A1 to beta. Now, for the transformation from script A2, to script B. In this case you have the same transformation. X1 is the minimum of the two random variables X1 and X2 and X2 is still the maximum of X1 and X2. But this time the inverses look like this. If you remember back to the uh, previous picture, 
when we were looking at this point right here, which was the point 0.9, point 0.7, we turned out to be reversing the two coordinates on the transformation. So what we want to do right here is we want to write x1 equals the second order statistic and x2 is the first order statistic. And so when we calculate a Jacobian here, this will be J2. This Jacobian will be dx1, dx1, which is 0, dx1, dx2, which is 1, dx2, dx1, which is a 1, dx2, dx2, which is a 0. When you calculate the Jacobian here, you get a negative 1. Now, the fifth step is to determine the region script B, and we have already done that. Script B is this region right here, so that will be step 5, and in this case we know that the region script B will be the set of all order statistics x1 and x2 such that 0 is less than x1 is less than x2 is less than 1. That's the region script B. And now we're off to the very last step. This is step 6. What is the joint distribution of the two order statistics x1 and x2? And it is as follows. Get the lowercase x1 and x2 as indexes. And if you go back and look at how to handle a 2 to 1 transformation, it will be 1 which is the joint PDF times the absolute value of the first Jacobian, J1, which is the absolute value of 1, plus then for the second transformation, it will be 1, which is the joint PDF of X1 and X2, multiplied by the absolute value of the second Jacobian. 1 plus 1 is 2, and that is defined on script B, which is 0, is less than X1, is less than x2 is less than 1. So there is the joint probability density function of x1 and x2 which was asked for in the problem.